Hello everyone. So in this video, we'll learn about numbers and strings in Python. So first, let's discuss how to use Python as a calculator using addition, subtraction, division, floor division, etc. So let's get started. So I'm using uh, Jupyter Notebook for this tutorial, so I will recommend you to watch our video on how to install Jupyter Notebook. Um, otherwise, you can use pretty much any IDE or editor of your choice and still be able to follow along. So first, let's create a new folder. So click on new. Let me zoom this out a little bit. So click on new and create a new folder. So this is typically alphabetical order. So this is our uh, folder that we just created. So click on that. We can create a folder here, but let's go back and rename this, uh, this folder. So click on it, click rename, and then you can pretty much name it anything you want. Uh, let's say Python basics or maybe, uh, um, yeah, Python basics, rename. So click on the folder, create new file. It's gonna open a new window. So here you can click on here directly and let's say numbers and strings for this first tutorial. Rename and we're ready to start. So you can use Python as a simple calculator. So you can write a math uh, expression uh, using you know regular operators like we talked about, addition, multiplication, etc. And it will output the values. So let's say you want to, you know, eight uh, times six. Uh, you can hit run, or uh, it'll output. I mean, if you if you put if you hit run, it'll output the the result. Or you can also hit shift and enter. Um, and it'll output the value as well. So this is multiplication, um, you know, let's say 100 plus uh, 36, shift and enter, um, let's say 87 minus 32 equals 55. Um, you can also use chain operations, eight times four, uh, minus 329. Um, so Python knows automatically that um, multiplication takes priority. Division, for example, um, let's say 7 divided by 4. So for division, uh, Python will always return a floating number. A floating number is just a number with decimal. So it's always going to return a floating number if you use a division. We can also have another chain operation. Let's say um, 36 um, minus 3 times 2. All of that divided by 4. And that's 7.5. A regular division, I guess, always returns a float number. So let's say, um, you know, 17, for example, divided by 3, like we, uh, we had a uh, regular division here. It's always going to return a, um, you know, floating number. But if you want to get rid of this fractional part, then you use a um, floor division. So that's, for example, 17 slash slash 3, and it's only going to output a 5. So if you also want to just re uh, return the remainder of, uh, of the division, uh, then you use a percent sign. So uh, let's say 17 percent, percent sign, 3. Then I expect to see 2 uh, because, you know, 3 times 5 is 15, and then 17 minus 15 is 2. So that's the remainder of that division. So if you want to just have the remainder of a division, then you use a percent sign. 
Python can also do uh, squares. So if, for example, you want um, 8 to the power 2, for example, which is 64, then you use 2 uh, stars and 2. So then that's uh, output is 64. Or just another example, um, you know, 5 to the power, I don't know, to the power 9 maybe. Then, you know, that's that long number right there. So let's see what else. So uh, the equal sign can also be used to uh, assign a value to a variable. So let's say you want to store a value to x. Uh, let's say x equal 36, for example. Um, y equals um, uh, 2. And you want to know if I multiply x by y, what the result is. Then you can just put uh, x times y, then it'll be 72. So you can do that. So, you know, any um, particular operation that you want from this, you can pretty much uh, use that. So let's say x divided by y, then, you know, that's 18 as well. So you can use uh, the equal sign also to assign a value to a particular variable of your choice. So we've talked about, uh, let's see here, addition, subtraction, uh, division, floor division, uh, using remainder of a division, etc. So also Python supports, um, you know, complex numbers, but we're not going to talk about that now. We'll just start with the, with the very basics. So we'll talk about complex numbers later on. So with that, um, that's it for numbers. So let's talk about strings. So um, besides the numbers that we just talked about, uh, Python can also uh, use strings, uh, which can be expressed in, in several ways. So you can use codes or double codes. Um, so we'll also look at how to write new lines, how to comment stuff out, or how to concatenate um, different strings. So let's get started on that as well. So if you want to just write a single, I mean, a simple expression, you can use a single code, for example, or a double code. So you can pretty much write anything. Uh, you can say, my name is Raya, for example. Um, so hit uh, shift enter or run it. Or you can also use double quotes, which will still be the same. My name is Raya. So, you know, it's going to spell out. However, the reason why I prefer to use um, double quotes is because sometimes you have a single quote within a quote. Uh, what that means is like, for example, how do you write a uh, single quote? For example, if you want to say, I am uh, Raya, for example. So how would Python know where the string stops, right? So that's the reason why I prefer to use um, double quotes just to escape from that. But you can still use a single quote uh, because there's a workaround. So the workaround is so the workaround is using um, uh, backslash uh, before the single code. So if you run this, it's going to spill out, uh, you know, I am Raya, for example. So just be mindful of that. So if you have a, uh, a regular code within your string, that's just there, just per English, um, just make sure you use a, uh, you know, backward slash before the actual uh, single code. Or if you just want to avoid all of that, just use double quotes for your strings. We can have another example. So let's say you can put, um, you know, uh, he doesn't worry about anything. I'm just, you know, putting stuff out there. It doesn't really matter. So if you run this, um, no worries, right? However, if you want to use a single code, remember, you can do this. He, so before the T, um, so use backward um, backward slash and then T and then continue your um, string.
there you go. So here, here's another example where a single code actually also makes sense is when you are actually coding within a code. What I mean is, uh, for example, you want to say, you want to code somebody saying yes, for example. So if you do this, yes, um, and you continue your code to say, um, I don't know, uh, he confirms, right? So you have yes within the code because you want to see the double quotes of yes, right, within that sentence. So if you run this, uh, you'll see the quotation um, of of the word yes, right? So this this is another example of where using um, you know single quote for the entire um, you know string will also make sense as opposed to uh, using uh, double quotes, for example. I hope that makes sense. So let's say now you want to use a new line, like you're writing a string and you want to use, you know, you know, you have like a, a long string and you kind of want to use a, a new line. So, for example, let's say, um, you know, like this is too long of a, you know, of a sentence, for example. And you want to break this down. Like if I had to run this, you know, this is what I'm going to get, correct? However, if I want, for example, to have um, all the sentence in a new line, don't just, um, you know, this is what, uh, what you're going to use. But you're going to have to use the print uh, command. So, for example, if you put um, N like that and you print it, it's not the N will be printed in the output, like you see here. So what you're going to want to do is you want to store the string into a string variable and then print out S, print out um, the variable. So here it'll break it down into lines. So this one will be a line and this will be another line. So let's run that. So you see that, and I have a space here. That's because I use a space, but you can you can do that. Um, you know, you don't need a space in that one. Uh, hit run, and you know it's going to print it out in a new line. So don't forget to, if you want to use a new line, you will have to store that in a variable and print it. So without a print, it's going to have the n as part of the output. So make sure you use print and use a variable in order to have a new line. So let's use another example. Let's say, um, you know, first name, last name, or maybe, uh, yeah, last name, for example. So let me run that first. But now I want to use first name on the first, uh, first line uh, and last name as a, as a second line. So what I will do is like we talked about, um, I'll use backward n here and then store this as a you know a new string. So I'll do that and then I'll print s2 and then you know first name, last name. So if you don't want a space, then it's okay to, to not have a space in between. So if you run that, first name, last name. Okay, let's see what else. So let's say you want to um, concatenate uh, two strings. Uh, what that means is you want to put them together, like you want to glue them together. Like, for example, let's say um, just random name, I don't know, Michelle, for example. Uh, if you, you know, print that, that's what it gives you, right? You get Michelle. But if I, for example, want to, you know, for whatever reason, right, uh, let's say... Um, I put mish and then I want to print L on the other hand, for example. So in this case, you can use single quotation and then the plus sign. So the plus sign and single quotation will concatenate uh, two variable, I mean two, two strings. So if I print, it's going to give me Michelle, just like over here, for example. So if I want to print out, let's say, twice uh, mish 
um, you can do, for example, it still will take uh, the multiplication operator as well, just like you do the plus sign here to concatenate. You can also multiply the number of times you want to see a particular string. So, for example, if I do this and I run it, then you see it's printed out mish and then mish twice because, you know, I multiplied it. Right? And you can also do the same thing here. If I want to see two L's, you can do two times L and then hit run. And then it prints out two mish, two mish. I mean, sorry, this is pretty random, but um, just kind of want to show you how you can use, um, you know, plus sign and multiplication to concatenate strings. So you see here two mish and then, um, you know, L here and then another L here. Just kind of following along the multiplication and the plus sign for concatenations. So if you want, you can also use just, uh, you don't have to use, for example, the plus sign either. Uh, just use quotation mark, for example, um, just to concatenate. Uh, Python will do that for you like this. So you don't have, if you use plus sign, it's still going to do it, but you don't have to use the plus sign either. So if you run that, it's still going to print out Michelle right here. Um, so you can also concatenate uh, two variables or variables in general. So let's say you say uh, first name, and we'll come back to, you know, naming variables and whatnot. So let's just say first name equals um, uh, John, and you want to add this to Doe, for example. You can say um, first name. Uh, plus, uh, plus Doe. And if you print that, it's going to say, you know, John Doe. So just concatenate two, two different variables. And you can do that. You can do the same thing with, with here too. Instead of putting this in quotation, you know, use a variable for last name and then concatenate first name plus last name, etc. So I think that's it for for strings. So one thing I forgot to mention is um, comments in Python. So in Python, you can use a hash character to comment something out, a line of code that you don't want be that you don't want as part of your script, for example. So if I want to comment this line out, um, you know, you just use a hash character. Or if you're in Jupyter Notebook, you can select all. For example, you know, if you had like 15 lines of code, instead of going, you know, one and then come back here and say, you know, another hash character, just select all and select all and do control and forward slash. So it's going to comment the whole line. So commenting is also used to clarify a line of code, for example. So if I want to remember, you know, what this one is for, you can just add it here and say this is for, I don't know, first name. Um, I put another comment here for uh, last name or whatever. So if I run this, um, it's not going to print these lines right here. All right. So that concludes uh, this video on numbers and strings. So let me know if you have any comments or any questions. Mm -hmm.